What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we're back with a brand new WWE Elite Wave, and it is the WWE Elite Royal Rumble 2024 set. Jesus Christ, 2024. How sickening. Feels like 2016 was yesterday. And before that, it felt like 2004 was yesterday. And before that, I was born. So, I wasn't born in 2004. I'm just saying, like, that's how fast, that's how fast life comes at you, Brad. But nonetheless, we do have our new WWE Elite Royal Rumble set. This will not hit officially for a while to retail stores, but Ringside Collectibles does have them available if you guys are interested in this set, you like what you see. You like the Beth Phoenix, the Brock, the Batista, Ridge Holland, first time in the line. Use code MDTOYS over there to save yourselves 10%. Get in on all the action over there. But we have a brand new build a figure set. We can build our Virgil figure with this wave here. But of course, if you guys weren't aware, we have Beth Phoenix, Brock Lesnar, Batista, and Ridge Holland, first time in the line, to come together for our Royal Rumble set, man. So this is a very unique wave, to be honest with you. I think it's an okay set. And of course, we're going to dive into everything and find out how good they are. But looking at each figure, individually. Beth Phoenix getting an updated figure. Haven't had one of her figures in a long time. There is Virgil there from 92. He's got his Indiana Hoosiers pants on. He's looking pretty good on the back. We're of course going to build him at the end. Hopefully my arms are not missing like on my British Bulldog. We also have Brock Lesnar with his brand new head sculpt. This one should be interesting nonetheless. Very unique packaging going on right here. I'm still not a fan of it man but it's got the red and stuff and you got Royal Rumble down here. Unique but I don't know how I'm feeling about it. We have Batista from his iconic 2005 win. Been actually wanting this figure for a long time in figure form as, as far as elites are concerned. This used to be on my wish list, so that's pretty cool to have this figure. And last but not least, we do have Ridge Holland with a really sweet jacket, man. Looking pretty good right there. It's got his mask, got a picture of Ridge there, Ridge there, and then of course you have him on the back with his mask, and then you have the rest of the figures in the way. But nonetheless, man, we're going to crack these guys out of their packaging, find out what they're all about, carry us through the entire Royal Rumble Elite set, and then build our Virgil figure and find out what this set is indeed all about. Alright guys, so here's our Royal Rumble Elites out of the packaging. Pretty solid little conglomerate of figures here. You dabble in a few different eras here. I say that like there isn't three modern ass figures standing here. I mean, this is, I mean, this is three like completely modern, like, and I mean, I guess you do have the throwback build a figure and things of that nature, but we have one Ruthless Aggression era figure and the rest are pretty much modern day. And then you do have a throwback again, like I said, with the build a figure. But nonetheless, man, let's dive into each figure individually. We're not going to put them on the rotating base and stuff like that. Usually when we have this full wave, we're to go figure by figure, show the accessories, show the figure itself, and then we're going to build our Virgil, and then at the end, we will be ranking this set from worst to best, including the Build-A-Figure. So that being said, man, let's dive the hell into Beth Phoenix, and then we'll move on. So I think one of the strongest things about the Beth Phoenix figure is going to be the head sculpt, and I really like all the different hair detail you have going on right here, man. A lot of good stuff going on here. You have the face paint and stuff like that. Very nice graphic right here with this Phoenix going on in the front in this, like, teal colorway. It's very Jacksonville Jaguar-esque color. It is not as blue. It's as it's coming off on camera. It's more of a teal or Jacksonville Jaguar greenish blue color. You have the eyes in there and the yellow. She does come with this duster, which is pretty nice. Is this supposed to be Hulk inspired gear? Beth Smash on the back right there. Did not know that. This is not, this doesn't look very Hulk inspired, but it does say Beth Smash on it. So I guess it's supposed to be Hulk inspired, but you have some nice sculpts going on here on the entrance coat. I mean, this looks just like her husband's entrance coat. So I'm guessing she went to the same exact tailor and designer and everything like that to make this, this little duster here, but it's got some, some really good sculpts and stuff like that. You got some stars on there. Very cool, but it's pretty much, I mean, this is like the same mold we've seen. Now, to get the duster off, I did have to remove her head sculpt here, but loving that on there, you guys can see she's got all the pinless joints and stuff. The shoulders are a bit weird, but that's just how all these women's figures are, man. They have these, like, they don't go all the way down, but this gear's pretty cool. I like the teal fingernail polish that she's got going. She's got the double jointed arms in there. Same legs we've seen before. She has the Decade of Domination Elite, and I don't, I want to say the rest of her figures have just been regular basics, but yeah, Beth Smash again. You have the fire. And then you have like her pants mold and then just regular shoes. I think this is similar to like the Trish Stratus mold that we saw way back in Elite 24 or no, Elite 19 or 20, whatever that was with the black and pink Trish. Not a bad figure at the slightest, but outside of her like entrance style hands that she has, she also comes with mic holding hands. So you get mic holding hands, you get the Beth Phoenix, and then you get her duster. And then she also comes with the Virgil torso. And the Virgil torso is the same British Bulldog torso we saw, except it's in the Virgil skin tone. And then it does have his waistband right there that says Virgil on it. And again, we'll take a closer look at this when we build the Virgil figure. Now getting into Brock Lesnar, man, starting out at the head sculpt, this is a brand new head sculpt. Now we're going to see this on basic figures and things of that nature, but he does have like the new beard in there. It kind of looks like he just woke up, you know? If you woke Brock Lesnar up out of a dead sleep, this is what it looks like. But I like it. I like the hair sculpt and everything like that. You do have like the new braid going on. I don't think we've seen that braid on a hair, on a, you know, a Brock Lesnar head sculpt before. So he does have the little ponytail Brock, you know, braided ponytail going on, which is pretty sweet. I like 
like it a lot. So we've kind of seen this progression from the crew cut to the ponytail, you know, in the middle, and then now he has the braid in the middle, so that's pretty cool. But I like the head sculpt, you know. I prefer him to be more pissed off rather than like, what'd you say? He's kind of like a what'd you say, bish type head sculpt. But same torso we've seen, same arms we saw in his Elite 96. This is basically the Elite 96 Brock, except he has pinless joints down here. That's literally the thing there. He's got the standard black shorts with the Brock Lesnar logos, all of his tattoos on here. He does come with fisted glove hands, which are very nice. I love to see that on my Brock Lesnar's. And then he does have just the standard black boots. So you're looking at a new head sculpt and then pinless legs for the updated Brock. I mean, it's not going to like shatter the earth, but this is a damn good figure. As a Brock Lesnar, though, I love Brock Lesnar and I love this figure. Still a damn good figure, even though you're not getting much updates. Even though it's not like hella different from his last figure. And then outside of that, he does have interchangeable hands. That's the only accessories you get. You get these choke slamming Brock Lesnar style hands. And then you get the same Brock Lesnar style hands, but they're mic holding or weapon wielding hands. So you get fists, mic holding hands, and choke slamming hands, all with the Lesnar gloves. And then he also comes with the build a figure Virgil arms and interchangeable hands. So you get the mic holding hands with Virgil and the fisted hands with Virgil that both come with Brock Lesnar. Now, as far as the Batista figure goes, man, this is the Ultimate Edition head sculpt from the Target exclusive Legends Ultimate. It's a very damn good head sculpt. Looks just like Batista. I think they do a really excellent job on Batista's head sculpts. Same torso we've seen. I mean, this is pretty much your Ruthless Aggression Elite that we got not too long ago, right? The Walmart exclusive. It looks just like it. It's a repaint of that figure. And we know that that's pretty much what most of these Royal Rumble sets are. You may get one little bit of piece of newness, and then you get a lot of repaint or reissue. But I mean, I guess you do have some new stuff going on here. But he is pinless. This is a new pinless Batista. I'm pretty sure the arms, the arms and the legs are pinless, however. So, you know, when you pull this up right here, man, the leg is pinless as well, which is something that I'm going to have to get used to. I still think they're too tight, and they, I'm going to say it every single video until it's adjusted. But nice formula for Batista before he had all the tats, but he does have his 2005 Royal Rumble gear in here, which is very iconic. Very clean, nice graphic on the back. Now I'm waiting on Great American Bash. I think it was 06. That's what I'm really waiting on with the white boots. But large knee pads, standard black boots, not his Batista style boots, which I don't remember if he was wearing in this matchup. I want to say he was wearing those style boots, but I could be wrong about that. Maybe this is before that. I think maybe after he won the world titles when he switched to that. But these are still sweet. I like this this figure. I mean, it's pretty much a repaint, but it's great gear. He's very toyetic anyways. And this is right up my alley. I love Batista back then. Still love Batista. And this was the meteoric rise of the animal. As far as interchangeable hands, you get mic holding hands, some fists, and then you do have like the thumbs up, thumbs down that he was doing at the time from the iconic segment. One of my favorite segments ever is the, the thumbs up to the thumbs down on Triple H. That is just, just so damn good, especially when you tied it in with Randy Orton and the whole Evolution storyline. A lot of people say they dropped the ball there, but I still think that that entire Evolution storyline is one of my favorites of all time in WWE history. And then there is our Indiana Hoosiers pants is what I call them because they look just like the Indiana Hoosiers pants, but these are pinless, very stiff legs, man. Jesus. But he does have his boots in here that have the little tassels around there, and these can slide up and down, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, you can actually move these if you'd like to. But Batista does come with the Indiana Hoosiers pants, if you guys were wondering. So again, we're going to build v Virgil here in just a moment, but uh, it is cool to see these pants. And they're, they're pretty much, they do have the same attachment piece at the top. I'm telling you, man, I think this is the future. We're going to get these figures that are going to be interchangeable. But until then, this is our Build-A-Figure legs. And then getting into Ridge Holland, man, he does come with his hat here, and it doesn't really fit well, I'm going to be be honest, it, it like kind of falls off. Like it doesn't hug the head sculpt whatsoever. And this head sculpt's not my favorite. He kind of looks like he's like, I don't even know. He just kind of has like that weird look to him. But he's got a nice haircut in there. He's got his beard and everything like that. This is his first time in the line. I haven't seen on Ridge Holland before, so that's cool. But yeah, his hat doesn't fit the, the best. But he does come with his little golf hat, whatever the hell style hat this is. Looking pretty good. Now he also comes with this rubber style mask that is very stretchy. So you can put this over the figure's face. So if you want to do this, you know, like pull it down and get it like that. And I think making it rubber is the way to go because it really fits the face well and like conforms to it so if it were hard plastic it probably wouldn't fit as well and it wouldn't be as snug and tight fitting but it looks pretty good on there you know if you want to put that mask on somebody else I think you could also do so but yeah there's the rubber mask on the face so he comes with a hat he comes with the rubber mask face thing he also comes with this little baton right here which is very nice too man I mean they loaded him up with accessories they held off the whole entire accessory budget to put it with Ridge Holland right here man because they completely I mean this is feels kind of like a main elite you you know, first time in line character, you get all these different accessories, so they really went all out on this Ridge Holland figure, so it's probably, I mean, it's probably safe to say that he probably won't have another Elite for a while, man, so 
This may be the one that you want to go after, but he comes with a little baton right here. It's got the little strings on it. And then he comes with this damn nice good jacket right here, man. Look at this entrance jacket. It's got these, like, chevron angled, like, line patterns going on right there. And it fits the figure really, really nicely and well. A very iconic jacket right here in the terms of accessories. That's what I mean by iconic. Like, this is a damn nice accessory, man. You're going to remember this one for a long time. You can put this on a lot of people. I mean, it's a very good entrance jacket, like, standard. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't think... You don't look at this jacket and go, oh, yeah, that's that rich holland jacket you look at this jacket and say oh that's a nice jacket so it wouldn't really matter who wears it so it's very nice it comes down to almost above the knee very clean fits the figure well very nice accessory i mean this is easily the best accessory in this entire wave but yeah nonetheless that is a damn nice jacket right there man it's a good jacket and then besides all that stuff you do get mic holding hands and fisted hands but getting into the formula of our rich holland figure he does have this like elite 47 cesaro style torso or the mizdow style torso which i feel like we haven't seen in a while i feel like we you know it's been a minute since we've seen this torso, but he's got the super jacked arms. This is the same Brock Lesnar style arms they use, the shoulders. Black and gold gear in there, and then on the back it does say Ridge there in the nice font. Kind of reminds me of like the Roaring Twenties or something. Very great Gatsby looking ass font. And then he does have like, I'm pretty sure these are Bo Dallas thighs, or these may be the William Regal thighs. They may, I want to say they're Bo Dallas though, but he is on ball joints, so that's good. They really need to keep using the William Regal mold. That's a mold that's kind of hard to find, so I want to say this is the Bo Dallas leg mold, but it could be the William Regal mold. If it is the William Regal mold, it's a great usage of that. But I feel like when you get back on proportions, I feel like maybe his legs aren't as big as his upper body. Like, I just think this torso paired with these arms just makes him look super jacked. But he also has his black knee pads in there and then just standard black boots with his little logos on there. Nothing too crazy or over the top. But, but that's pretty much your Ridge Holland figure, man. Still don't have a butch figure, but probably good. And then the Ridge Holland figure does come with the Virgil head sculpt, which looks pretty damn good. I like the sculpt on it. It looks like him. My eyes may be a little bit misprinted but I don't think it's egregious, so that looks pretty good for Virgil right there, but now let's build our Virgil figure. Alright guys, so here's our Build-A-Figure Virgil pieces. Now again, Beth Phoenix comes with the torso, Brock Lesnar comes with the arms, Batista comes with the legs, and Ridge Island does come with our head sculpt. Now, I will try to show you guys how you can pair this with your British Bulldog if you picked up both pieces and whatnot, but let's just go ahead and take our Virgil and see if we can build this guy up. Now, looking at both sides, it is apparent that my British Bulldog was wrong. There's a circle there, and there's a circle there, so I shouldn't have have any issues trying to connect and build my Virgil figure like there was issues when I tried to build my British Bulldog. So hopefully we will not run into that, but uh, yeah, that was super frustrating. If you guys go watch our Survivor Series Elite Build-A-Figure, my torso from my British Bulldog was completely messed up. And so I got to go buy another one at some point. But it does look like we're all clean over here, man. And that is super tight and feels nice. And look at Indiana Hoosiers Virgil. Looking like a damn beast right there. But go ahead and put the head sculpt on there. And now we have our Virgil. And that, dude, this is a nice figure, man. Look at that right there, dude. Wow, that's pretty damn, uh, you got a little something special going on there, young man. That's pretty good right there. He's on bald joints. He's got nice, dude, the freaking pinless joints, man. People could say they like it. They look aesthetically okay, but damn, they're tight. At least on the legs. The legs are awful when it comes to that, but this figure feels immaculate in hand. I think you're going to really like the posability on this Virgil. Really wish my British Bulldog had that, but this is this is very clean, man. I love this. Look, look how damn nice he looks. Wow. I'm actually very, very impressed with this. If elites make this the standard go-to, like building, popping, and locking and dropping like this, man, and you're just able to snap them together like legs to torso to arms to head sculpt, and we're able to interchange parts, this will absolutely change the game because this is a tight waist, tight ab crunch, arms are not loose. I mean, this is unbelievable if they're able to get this like virtually one day. And I feel like that's probably where they're going eventually. And that is going to destroy the competition, I feel like. I mean, this is crazy how well and nice this is. So keep making these strides, Mattel. But with that being said, we do have our interchangeable hands over here. But with that being said, man, let's get Virgil off screen. Let's rank these figures from worst to best, in my own personal opinion, and get the hell out of here. All right, man, so coming into the bottom of the ranking for me, man, is going to be the Beth Phoenix figure, man. One of the things I really don't like is how the arms don't always come all the way down on these women's figures. And they don't go all the way up either. You guys can see it's like kind of stuck in limbo right here. Like it really is hard to get above 90 and then going lower it feels like it's gonna snap my arm off so between that and the super stiff legs and just 
just the overall posability of the Beth Phoenix figure. I have her in my last place, even though it is a pretty damn good figure. It looks just like Beth, and I think it's probably the best Beth to date when you include all the newness of the updated joints and things of that nature. Next up in my ranking is going to be Batista. Now, even though this does hit me in the nostalgia feels and one of my favorite memories as a, as a wrestling fan and just loving Batista and the gear and everything, it is basically just a repaint of his Ruthless Aggression Elite, and I do love that Ruthless Aggression Elite. However, at the end of the day, I think there are better figures in this set, and uh, and I do love the Batista figure. It's a damn good figure, but for that reason, I do have Batista coming in at the second to last. Coming into the number three spot, I have the Ridge Holland figure, man. Really liking this figure more than I thought I would. I'm still not a big fan of the formula. I feel like his torso doesn't need to be this ripped up. His arms are a little bit oversized, but I do like a lot of things going on with this figure. I think he feels pretty good in hand. I love all the accessories he comes with and things of that nature, but I would rather have the Ridge Holland over the other two, just comparisons and different stuff of that nature, even though it kind of pains me that the Batista is behind the Ridge Holland. Kind of makes me upset, but diving into the last two figures in the set, man, coming in at my number two figure is going to be the Brock Lesnar. I love the Elite 96 Brock. You guys know I love Brock Lesnar. I love his figures, collecting his figures. You guys know the collection of the Brocks and, and just getting different Brock figures I enjoy. I love Brock Lesnar. Arguably, like, one of my, probably in my top ten favorite wrestlers of all time. Love me some Brock Lesnar, but I do have him at number two. Very similar to his Elite 96, but I do like the new things we have going on with this figure, but number one has to be the Build-A-Figure, man. This Build-A-Figure is unbelievable. The Virgil is great, man. What a great figure. I love the, the tightness and the joints. I love how poseable he is. Very good likeness. Great gear. Just a lot of really good stuff going on with the Virgil figure, man. I think you are really going to enjoy the Virgil if you do end up picking up the full set or whether you get it in the aftermarket, whatever you do. Virgil figure is damn nice. But that pretty much wraps up my ranking of this set. Now, if you guys want to pair this with your British Bulldog and put, you know, the Virgil in these, uh, these jeans that we got with our British Bulldog right here, you can snap this off right here. Not snap it off, but you know what I'm saying. Unplug it there. Then come over here to your Virgil. Do the same thing. Unplop this. And then you can take this and put this on here. And then boom, now you have Virgil in the jean pants. Two O-shirts we've gotten with other figures, and you can make a Virgil or a Vincent. So that's pretty damn good right there. And then if you want to put British Bulldog in the Indiana Hoosiers pants, you could also do that. So there's that if you want to do that. Mine's Mine has one arm because uh, the hole over here got messed up. It, mine was like some sort of factory error or something, but I like that new torso we got going on. I like this full wave. I think you guys will enjoy this if you would like to grab them. You can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but that is going to wrap up our WWE Elite Royal Rumble 2024 wave for the year, man. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. I'd love to know your thoughts on all of these down in the comment section below. Huge shout out to our patron members of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate their continued support on the channel. Love you guys so very much and thankful for all and every single one of you. If you guys are interested in that, check out the link in the description below. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later.